This week on Inside the Headset, we are honoring the life and legacy of Coach Mike Leach with his general session from the 2009 convention. Coach Leach was a pioneer in the game, and the AFCA and the coaching community are better because of his impact. I'm in the middle of a bunch of people that I value their opinion, you know. I mean, a whole lot of times... uh, You'll speak somewhere, maybe a rotary club or something, and you want it to go well, but, uh, uh, you know, if it goes okay, it's okay. But, uh, you you know, you you guys are the guys, and you guys know as much uh, about, uh, you know, the subject or anything I'm going to talk about as I do. So, so, you know, it's not like uh, there's anything uh, dazzling or any of that business um, that I can really throw out there because – you know, we're in the greatest profession in the world. Uh, you guys, you guys are my peers and, uh, and, uh, I, you know, I think, uh, I think it's a gra- the, the greatest, uh, uh, thing that there is. I mean, anything that's, uh, that's fulfilling to people on a, on a, on a broad, uh, scale like football is, uh, and anything that touches as many people as football does and, uh, anything that, uh, builds a character that football does is, is, a uh, is, a uh, a real, uh, you know, virtuous pursuit. And there's no question about that. And um, so with that, I, I, I really feel honored to be here, and I really feel honored that uh, that uh, you guys would care what I have to say. But the um, uh, I get asked uh, periodically, you know, I got the paper on the sideline that I call the plays with. I get asked, uh, uh, you know, what's on the paper? Well, this speech, that's what's on the paper. So I just brought the same paper with me and brought it over here. And, uh, so we'll just, uh, cover those things on, on that. But, uh, the, 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 I want to, uh, recognize my staff. I've got the, the, I think I've got the greatest staff in America. Uh, so, uh, uh, anybody on my staff, uh, stand up, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I, I want to, uh, I want to, you know, them to know how much I appreciate their efforts. I've got great players, great uh, coaches, and I think that's the most important thing of all. Um, you know, and, and, and I, I would say this to, uh, uh, Bear Bryant said, uh, only coach if you can't conceive of doing anything else. And, um, <clears throat> well, I, I had kind of a strange path to coaching. And so with that said, uh, you know, anybody that's, uh, that's wondering how it's all going to work out. I mean, if, if it worked out for me, there's hope for everybody because, uh, cause I grew up in, uh, I grew up in Cody, Wyoming, which is not the biggest bastion of football there is. I mean, there's grizzly bears, but there's not so much, uh, uh, football and things of that nature. And, and I started coaching little league baseball when I was 15 years old. And it was just simply, uh, uh you know, I looked out there and I thought, well, you know, I can do that, and I can do that better than these guys. And so, you know, at 15, with a whole bunch of energy, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'd, 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 I'd get those kids, and we'd, uh, you know, work long hours and had a big time. And, and so I kind of got the coaching bug there, and uh, I coached Little League Baseball from from uh, 15 years old till uh, sophomore in college. And I, I know that that – uh, sounds insignificant, but it certainly, it certainly wasn't to me. And it's, and it's why I'm, uh, coaching college football right now, because I never really got that out of my system. Uh, you know, I played football in high school. I was average, uh, was a part of a great team coached by a fellow named John McDougal, uh, who was kind of this, uh, sort of John Wayne figure, you know, at least as far as, uh, uh, you know, when I was a kid and, you know, and that, that type of thing sticks with you and everybody, you know, has had experiences like that, positive and negative with, uh, with, uh, coaches. And then, uh, you know, I was lucky to be uh, on a really good team. And so in, in the team part didn't really set into me <clears throat> until later on, but it truly was significant. Uh, you know, as I look back on it, the fact that we're, uh, really on, uh, you know, you know, just the, the team and everybody working together and the ups and the downs. And, and, uh, you know, we were lucky enough, uh, to, to be on a real successful team. And I think, uh, those teams are tend to be a little tighter. And, and, you know, we had an underdog quality there too. We we're the smallest school and the biggest classification. And we, uh, and then, and then we, uh, 
we, uh, uh, you know, won the state championship in triple overtime and played for it the next year. And then my senior year, of course, we didn't do anything. And, um, but nevertheless, just the excitement of being a part of, of that was important to me. Then I broke my leg. Then I went to, to, uh, college at BYU. And then I, I said, well, I've got to, you know, I want to do something competitive. I want to, uh, and, and BYU is a little too good a football for uh, a, a player like me. So I started playing rugby and then, uh, well, and then I just figured, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, go to law school and that's gonna be the end of it and I'm gonna wear a suit and hang a shingle up and, and, and I did get uh, bit by coaching. I never did get the hang of wearing, uh, uh, wearing a suit. And, uh, now some of you guys might be able to wear suits pretty well. I'm not one of those guys. And, uh, uh I look bad in them and, I, and I'm uncomfortable. So, <clears throat> is uh you know 60 minutes deal they said uh, they said hey uh they said do you want to wear a suit i said no nah. and so then instead they you know i was just the fat-faced guy that uh that uh you know they'd ask ask questions and i'd talk well anyways so i go to i go to i go to law school and and law school's got a little bit of uh coaxing that goes into it because it's a grind and and uh, you're studying the same subject. Virtually every class is the same subject, law. And um, <clears throat> and um, so as I'm uh, going through that, they had this little thing. They'd say, they'd say, I love law, you know. And you got to love the law. Do you love the law? I love the law, you know. And it'd go like that, you know, just as you're trying to talk yourself into enjoying the thing. And um, <clears throat> so the... Uh, the, uh, and then I'll tell you, I'll tell you about a guy that really loved the law. And this kind of tells you the stress that goes along with some things. But this fella, he looked kind of like Clark Kent. And he was a nice enough guy outside of just that whole poindextry thing. And, 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 uh, and he breaks up with a girl. And, uh, a girl. And I think part of uh, the reason, uh, he was so stressed out, uh, uh, about the breakup is because, you know, she was an heiress to a big corporation, and so I'm not sure that that didn't bother him a little more than, than the breakup itself. But he, he uh, so at uh, during rush hour, uh, after the breakup during rush hour, he's running naked down Pacific Coast Highway, which is a very busy street on the coast of California, uh, yeah, screaming, "I love law! I love law!" And then uh, they uh, sent him uh, to a they sent him to a a, a nut house there in New Jersey. Or a, uh, after that, so I didn't see him anymore. So I'm thinking, well, I don't, you know, uh, laws maybe not for everybody. But I didn't have I didn't have some earth shattering experience. Uh, you know, uh, I, I kept my clothes on. I quit saying I love law quite so often. And um, and so then what I did. <laughs> is I wrote a letter to a guy named Jerry Spence. And Jerry Spence, uh, in my estimation, was kind of the top of the field as far as attorneys go. You know, he was the guy that fought for the little guy. He was the kind of guy that would sue General Motors. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, one of the most exciting cases, the, the uh, uh, Penthouse Magazine wrote a salacious article about... Uh, uh, about a, a, a girl, and there are too many parallels to a real person. So uh, they bring Bob Guccione into Laramie, Wyoming, and he's got silk shirts, and he's got chains down to here. And Jerry Spence, uh, after uh, Jerry Spence got a hold of him, and $18 million later, uh, the young lady was made whole. And uh, all of that uh, seemed very exciting to me. And, and the other thing is, is Jerry Spence and I actually – He's older than me, but had lived in the same town. I've never met the guy. I've talked about him for years, but I've never met him. And <clears throat> so, so I sent him, a, I sent him a letter and the letter said, uh, it says, you know, dear Mr. Spence, you're the top of the field of uh, what I would like to be. And, and, uh, you know, was it worth it? Do you love law? Uh, do you, uh, do you hate law? If you had it to do over again, would you do it over again? He sent me a letter back and he says, yes, I love law. Yes, I hate law. He says, but I'm consumed by it. He says, if, uh, 
if uh, you're consumed by law, go be an attorney. But if you're not consumed by it, go be something, or go do something that you are consumed with. And I think that's the the real beauty and virtue of coaching is it is consuming. It's consuming to us as coaches, and it's consuming uh, to the players. And if it isn't consuming to the players, typically they don't last too long. You get you got to either get them converted or uh, or they're not going to be very good. Or and, and that's part of your role as a coach, I think. And and so. Then I got to thinking, well, between the television set, the refrigerator, and the patio, what do I think about mostly? You know, do I think about law? Uh, you know, do I think about, you know, gee, you could, uh, you know, uh, you know, rule something or other, and the, and the uniform commercial code says this, and that would sure look nice in a brief. I didn't think about that very often. I thought about, uh, you know, I, I thought about uh, football. I thought about baseball. I thought about uh how great it would be uh to get in it well and then uh <clears throat> so you can kind of imagine the expression on my in-laws faces uh after after their daughter and i have, a, I have the greatest wife in the world uh uh you know and so we uh, we had a child and we we were in a little bitty apartment in canoga park uh, california it had bars on the window. We were in the barrio. We were right next to that concrete ditch that you see the high-speed uh, car chases in, in movies and things. We had uh, shoreline property to, the, to that, but there was never water in it. And um, and uh, so uh, and after all the the, the work, uh, uh, I said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get a master's and coach football." Well. <coughs> uh, and the expression on their face was priceless. And um, so then, then I uh, uh, went to the United States Sports Academy and, and, and got the Masters. And, and, and right, at, right at that very year, that's the year that they said they said uh, only two GAs, you know. I mean, because anybody would take free help uh, for the most part, only two GAs. So then, uh, you know, I went and... Uh, and uh, and basically did it for free at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Made ten grand at uh, at uh, College of the Desert. Went to Finland and got expenses uh, paid. And then went to Iowa Wesleyan College, uh, where I made uh, uh, you know ten to thirteen thousand for the first couple of years there. And uh, you know, and was in constant debates with the student loan people on uh, on uh, you know why I shouldn't have to pay back my uh, Forty-five thousand dollars in student loans, and um, and I told you that to tell you this that uh, you better enjoy the journey. There isn't anywhere that I haven't enjoyed living, uh, and there's something good about everywhere. And I loved that little old apartment in Canoga Park because I saw things I'll never see again, like helicopters flying over with light shining in your window to see if you're up to any mischief and things of that nature. And um, and when and, and in the course of that. Um, and I've had great, uh, I've had great coaches to work with. I've been very lucky as far as the coaches I've had to work with. And then the other thing, and I heard Bill Walsh say this once, um, you know, embrace where you're at. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to be places for like more than one year, for a couple years, you know, where you can really develop your skills. You work with the same players and you discover, you know, this works or that works or this is good and this isn't so good. And, you know, to reach this guy, you put it this way. To reach that guy, you put it that way. If you need to get this guy's attention, yell at him in front of the group because he, you know, that'll that'll motivate him. But this guy, you better bring him behind closed doors because, you know, if he loses face, he loses confidence. That type of stuff, you know. And and um, so, you know, I feel like I've really been lucky with that. And then I worked with a fella named Hal Mummy at Iowa Wesleyan College who. Uh, was a tremendous uh, influence on me and, you know, gave me an opportunity. Uh, didn't give me a lot of money, but he gave me, um, he gave me, you know, I, I mean, I, I, it was a great, it was the most priceless experience ever. I mean, it was, I was, I was the recruiting coordinator. I was the video guy. I was the equipment guy. I was the offensive coordinator. I was the offensive line coach and I was the sports information director. And, um, and, uh, Dealt with administration a little in the in, in the course of that. I mean, this lady wanted to, uh, you know, thought you should have a, pre a press release. Well, I'm busy doing all kinds of other stuff. Thought I shouldn't be able to 
call newspapers and tell them what was going on. Well, so uh, I'd call USA Today as we had this quarterback break in these records and and say, I'd say, well, uh, you know, well, you know, Dustin Dewald did this and Dustin broke this record and that record. Well, and so then pretty soon she gets upset, says, you know, you're in trouble. I told you not to do that. Mail it out. We well, yeah, mail it out by Thursday. Maybe they'll print it, you know. And uh, I said, well, listen, I said, the sports information office um, got us into USA Today three times this year, and your office couldn't get us into USA Today if there was a mass murder on campus. And um, so, you know, all, uh, uh, and so then uh, they banned me from, uh, I was, it was kind of like two live crew. I was banned. And um, I, I was banned from campus for three days, um, not banned from teaching the classes I was teaching. I also taught classes. Not banned from teaching the classes, not banned from being SID, only banned from being, uh, only banned from coaching football. So, I mean, what I draw from that is other people, uh, in spite of the fact that it, it's, it's demanding and, and it's a passion and stuff like that. And it definitely is a passion because people do it for free. And I know because I did do it for free and was very proud of those days and, 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 the, and the dues that went into that. And then, um, but, uh, you know, the people are, 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 you know, people that aren't passionate or jealous of people that are passionate. And, um, uh, but with Coach Mummy, we would go anywhere and everywhere and study uh, what other people were doing. We, we would, I mean, we'd drive to a high school if they had some neat little play or something like that. We'd drive up to the Green Bay Packers. We would drive to any college under the sun and, and, uh, and blizzards, uh, as we're driving across Iowa. And, 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 and in the course of that, I was fortunate to develop a, a pretty good knowledge base and certainly a diverse one. Um, and, 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 you know, studying the game, I mean, just the passion to, to study f football because it's got so much dimension that, um, you know, it never really gets boring and at least not for me. And, and I think that, that that was really, I mean, if I were to say anything, so, you know, study the game and be excited about studying the game. And, um, and, uh, uh, and in the course of that, uh, you know, all kinds of plays, you know, you can do it this way, you can do it that way. And, um, uh, but you know, I think obviously that needs to be pared down. I think that, uh, I think it's important to have just, uh, I think it's important to have a philosophy. In, in other words, a core of beliefs on, uh, how you're going to take care of your program, how you're going to do business, how, you know, wh what's important to you as a coach, what's important to your program, and, uh, and, uh, uh, how, you know, how you're, how you're gonna, the, the identity of your team, your philosophy is gonna develop an identity for your team. And I think, uh, and I think it needs to pr be pretty encompassing. Uh, but our, our, just in general, our philosophy, and we, we push this on the players, we tell them, get better every day. And a lot of this is gonna be simple. You're gonna, some of you are gonna say, well, gee, I'm glad I went and heard that guy speak because, you know, this is just brilliant, you know, but, um, but, uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, we push these things, we push them hard. Uh, get better every day. Uh, and, and, and what's important about get better every day is, is we take pride in the fact that uh, we do some things different than other people. We take pride in the fact that some of what we ask our players to do may be more difficult or different than other teams do. And, and, and the point of the matter is, is, uh, is if you expect your results to be, if you do the same thing they do, Odds are your results will be the same thing as all the other teams are. We want our results to be different to the positive. So, uh, we have no problem asking them to do things differently or asking them to do something that, uh, other teams don't ask them to do. And, um, uh, and, and I think that's what, uh, uh, get better every day. I mean, um, the, uh, the, you know, in, in a meeting, Focus and draw more out of the meeting than the guy, uh, on the, the other teams on your roster. You know, and to, to try to ingrain in your guys a pride and an importance and, um, trying to get a little more out of that meeting, try to get a little more out of that rep. And, 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 you know, every little bit helps. And I've always been, 
uh, with, with the possible exception of Valdosta State, I've always been at teams where we weren't the most talented uh, team in the, in the conference. You know, we were a team that had to find uh, ways to, to, to get an edge, ways to maximize. And, 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 and I think if you can get your players thinking like that, maybe the guy does the drill a step harder. Maybe he zeroes in just a little bit more in the meeting. Um, I just thought of this. Uh, prob uh, we have a thing in the meetings. Uh, if a guy's in a meeting, you know, like a position meeting, if he's tired, he's allowed to stand up. Uh, but but uh, uh, but if he falls asleep, we'll have a big cup of ice water. Coach will go in, coaches will go in drinking their big cup of ice water, and then uh, and you know, and then if the guy falls asleep, of course you dump it over his head. And um, the uh, and then you know the thing there is is you get uh, a whole room full of people trying to catch somebody sleeping because they want to see that kid get ice water dumped over his head, and so you have them. Uh, kind of helping you police the situation, and it's great fun for everybody except the guy that gets the ice dumped over his head. Uh, well, one, one time I, I dumped on this, I was coaching old line, dumped it on this old lineman, and startled him to, to the point I almost got hit because he started swinging and swiping and damn near belted me. But um, the uh, but uh, and then the other thing that I think is important is compete with yourself, and we have. Uh, until they blew off, and we we get the relatively stiff wind in Lubbock, Texas, and, and, and uh, we have them uh, posted around our field. Now we have them posted in the building. Um, compete with yourself, and 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 by that we mean uh, don't confuse activities with results. I mean everybody is practicing, everybody is running routes, everybody is blocking, everybody is lifting weights. Unless you're doing that the very best you possibly can, you really aren't heading anywhere significant. And it doesn't matter if you're the best player on the team. The fact that you can whip the, 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 the scout team guy across from you, uh, you know, and just because you have good results in practice, uh, you know, I think a lot of times there's a temptation to be result determinative. You know, you say, well, uh, I beat him, so that's what counts. I mean, I beat him, so that's, we're okay. Well, it, it really isn't in the big picture. I mean, at some point in time, uh, you may be across from an All-American who's at some other school. And if you haven't utilized your time in preparing to the very best uh, of your ability, despite the fact that the guy across from you in practice is an inferior player to you, uh, you're not going to be ready for the big challenge when you face somebody that's a little better than you. But I believe this. If you will compete with yourself, and if you are able to compete at a high level for a long, consistent period of time, most people really aren't able to do that. I would, you know, and, and the longer you can develop the, the, the skill to do that, the better you can be. Because nobody's perfect. And, uh, you know, you may have a guy that's really talented, and he's able to compete to the best of his ability, uh, 65 percent of the time. Well, if you develop the, the ability to do it 85 percent of the time, even though he's better than you, he may he may get some plays on you, but you can narrow that gap. If you can do it 85 percent of the time, there's going to be some plays where he is not uh, competing with himself to the to, to the at, at the highest level, and, and, and then he's going to fall short, and, and you're able to, to to take those plays away from that guy. And I think it's important <clears throat> that people. Uh, gauge their performance by whether it's the best of their ability. Everybody's capable <coughs> of doing their best. Little old ladies are capable of doing their best. Uh, no matter, no matter uh, whoever's the worst athlete in this room, perhaps me, I'm capable of doing my best. So anything short of that uh, is really inexcusable in the world of football. And I think that uh, you know, and if you get, if you can form the group mentality around these things, then it becomes what's expected. It becomes the norm. It becomes, uh, what they're, they're, the, the people around them expect them to do. And, and all these things in my mind apply to coaches. There is no, uh, I don't think you, you ask players to do anything you don't ask coaches to do. Um, the other thing we talk a lot about is play the next play. And, and, and because I think one of the toughest things is dealing with disappointment and is dealing with uh, big success. Play the next play. All that counts is the next play. Um, 
It doesn't matter what happened the play before. Where you see it the most is, or where I see it the most is with linemen because they're really conscientious, typically a lot of offensive linemen, conscientious guys, and they're, they're, they're really out there, you know, just waging war. And line's why we have football anyway. Otherwise, it's just some form of uh, basketball or soccer, which there's nothing wrong with those things, but they're still not football. And... Um, the uh and so i mean in the in the, in the, the lineman uh, but but your offensive lineman if he gets whipped one thing i really hate to see he gets whipped on a play and, and then they start beating each other over the head with their fists you know this business where where somehow they're going to straighten the situation out <clears throat> by pounding their head with their fists you know that would be a, a that would be a tremendous example of failing to play the next play all that counts is the next play. The guy might be frustrated, but the rest of us, the other, the, the other people on the team don't have time for an individual to, uh, to be frustrated. I mean, well, we, you know, we need somebody to block this guy the next play. Quit hitting your, you know, your helmet with your fist and all this other stuff and all this frustration business because we need somebody to block him this next play. So, so, so line up and, and, and compete with yourself and do that to the very best of your ability. And, um, and you know, and just the fact that uh, the ability to clear your mind if, if something negative happens. The other thing you'll see sometimes, maybe a guy intercepts a ball, runs it back for a touchdown. And then he's so happy about doing that that he squanders a series or two after that. You know, we go, yeah, that was a good play. Man, I scored a touchdown. Did you see it? You know, I, I, uh, you know, I mean, you got to. Yeah, you know, we might get two touchdowns, maybe three. I mean, play the next play, focus in on the next play, and and and, and I think that's important with uh, coaches too. I mean, you you go out there, you, you you game plan all week, you practice all week, and and then you know some play doesn't work out. Well, you got to go to the next one. You got to keep your mind clear. Expect good things to happen. Uh, then the other thing we talk about: uh, play one game a week. Play one game a week, and. Um, the uh, uh, so you know win one game a week. Uh, it does not matter what so and so's rank down the road. You're not playing them this week. Just worry about the game you're playing this week. And we don't allow the uh, quotes or any of that business uh, in the paper from the the players. So just win one game a week. All that counts is that game. You're only able to to play the one game. So focus all attention on that. And if you improve incrementally uh, in that game, uh, then you'll be more prepared for the next game. But if you squander it by thinking about the, uh, the game down the road, it's really not going to be very good. Then the other thing that we talk about in conjunction with that is respect everyone, fear no one, uh, John Wooden saying. Um, respect everyone, fear no one. You don't play anybody that doesn't deserve your your respect, uh, and and now we can all think of examples where where you know uh, in in our careers where where uh, either us or our team didn't properly respect the opponent. Um, we can uh, and then you can we we can also think of examples where you know just a little afraid afraid of what might happen. Well, geez, they're really good. Their linemen are really big. They're really fast. Uh, I think it's important. And, even where, and there's no place, everybody says, well, I'm just being realistic. There's no place for being realistic. I mean, nothing about this whole profession is particularly realistic anyway. I mean, uh, you know, some kid didn't come to you to, to, to uh, uh, for you to coach him and be realistic and tell him what he can't do. I mean, because you don't really know. I mean, all of a sudden, maybe the guy can do this. Maybe your team can do this. You know, maybe... And, and, and so, uh, you know, expect to win every game. I mean, we, uh, you know, this last year we, we won 11 games and we're upset twice, you know. And, uh, so, I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, every loss we've ever had is an upset. And, uh, uh, now that doesn't mean you dwell on it. I mean, you still have to play the next play, but, uh, uh, and, and, and everybody's, you know, you see really daunting teams on film, but, uh, by Wednesday, I'm fairly certain we can beat the New England Patriots, you know. And, um, and I think that, uh, and, and, and it can only help you 
to expect good things to happen. It can only uh, uh, help your team to perform better, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you think positively. And then that gets contagious. And maybe you really aren't good enough to beat that team, but I'll tell you what, uh, it, it helps enhance and ensure your chances of putting your best foot forward and giving yourself every opportunity to do that. And, well, I'm just being realistic. Well, it's baloney. I mean, I, I, and, and I don't think there's any place for that in, uh, in, uh, in coaching. But that's just one guy's opinion. Um, the, uh, we talked to our team. I used to take the team, uh, we, we'd split our team up and, uh, we have a thing called super games, which, uh, which if I get time, I may tell you about that. But the, um, uh, in other words, our team is split up, uh, into, into, uh, eight groups. And, and so, but we used to take the eight groups and have them go off on their own and discuss, you know, what the team goals should be before spring. And is that the five minute sign? Five minute, damn. Well, we, all right. We, we, we used to, we used to get the team. We used to discuss, uh, we used to discuss, uh, uh, you know, what, what the goals should be. Well, and then the thing is, and, and, and the wording might be different, but the goals always came out, uh, the same. You know, I mean, and there's a lot of ways to say the things that I'm about to say, but, um, the wording always came out the same, which was, uh, and so here's what we've narrowed them down to. We're not going to have little committee meetings and discuss what our goals are in the future. These are our goals. These are going to be our goals next year and the year after that and the year after that. Uh, the, the number one goal is be a team, uh, be a team. And I know that's, uh, fairly simple, but, uh, and we, all our guys, they got a thing on their wrist that says be a team. Now it's strategically in red and black because we want to be a specific team, but, um, the, uh, be a team. All parts in a car are important. All parts in a car are important. If you, if you, if you ask a guy, What's the most important part of the car? Of course, they always say the engine. And, uh, and, well, and, and I remember when I was in high school, there's a, a big heavy guy named Todd. And Todd was one of those guys that worked on cars and we're going up, uh, a hill, uh we're going up a hill beside him and his wheels kind of wobbling. He leans out the window and starts, he says, Hey, I only got one lug nut on the tire. Well, and son of a gun, if right when he did that, that tire didn't, uh, the, the wheel didn't fall right off his car and, 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 and slam down on the pavement and Todd wasn't going anywhere. Well, if you, if you, if you, if you think the engine's the most important part of the car, uh, go on and do all the lug nuts on your car and then go for a drive and see how that works. And, 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 um, I mean, uh, so every role is important. I mean, maybe your, your engine's your quarterback or your running back or your, some key defensive player or something like that. Uh, every position's important. Your scout team is vitally important. Uh, I think one of the things that has, has helped us is we have great scout teams. We, 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 that, uh, we recognize them after each practice. We meet with them. Uh, and, and we have great scout teams. Uh, I think every role in, in on a team's important. Um, be the most excited to play. Be the most excited to play. One time we were playing a team, a little old lady, uh, we tell the little old lady story uh, fairly often. We, we, we were playing a team, there's a little old lady that sa says, well, the, the, the black team's going to beat the red team. You know, well, how do you know that? Well, look at them. They're, I mean, they're bouncing down the tunnel, and they can't wait to get out there on the field. And son of a gun, we did. We had a huge day. I mean, and she'd never been to a football game. Well, I mean, if, if, if it's that apparent to her, it ought to be apparent to us. Uh, there's really no uh, replacement for being the most excited to play, the most excited to do your job, the most excited uh, to do any of these things. Uh, and then be the best at doing your job. Your job, you might have a limited role, you might have a huge role. Be the best at doing your job. And we emphasize that over and over. We have, uh, the, the, the greatest overachiever I've ever coached is a guy named Wes Welker. Uh, Wes Welker's about five foot eight. He's got, uh, you know, he, he he's, uh, you know, he's not all chiseled up. He runs a four seven and change. 
uh, wasn't drafted in the last two years has led the NFL in, in receiving. And, um, and uh, Wes had a, a quote in a paper that uh, I think uh, applies to a lot of things. He says, uh, Wes says, I just worry about what I can control, and that is me going out and believing in myself. Now, everybody can do that. Everybody can worry about what they can control, and everybody can believe in themselves. And, and we have that posted um, in, our, in our meeting rooms because I want our coaches to see it because I want our coaches to instill that into the players rather than the other way around. Rather than have it in the locker room and maybe they read it, maybe they don't. I want our coaches instilling that in our players. And the other thing, and I got this from uh, a guy told me that Dick Tomey did this, and then I called Dick Tomey. And, uh, and, uh, he told me about, uh, uh, this next quote. Now I have this hanging in, in my office and mine's the biggest. I made sure mine's twice as big as everybody else's. And, but in every coach's office, secretary's office, it says you are either coaching it or you are allowing it to happen. If you don't like the way, um, your players are playing, uh, then look at that side. You know, if some, you know, this business, uh, well, I've told the guy a thousand times and he still won't do it. You've told him a thousand times? I mean, you're no better coach than that. I mean, you've told him a thousand times and he won't do it? Uh, well, they, you're a horrible coach, you know. Uh, uh, you're either coaching it or allowing it to happen. Never as a coach uh, relinquish uh, or, or allow yourself to not be accountable for how your players play. If you want to see how good of a coach somebody is, turn on the film, just like Coach Tomey said, Turn on the film and watch how your players play. I mean, uh, how, how good, how good, how good of a receiver coach is this guy? Or how good of a secondary coach? Well, let's turn on the film. Let's see what his players do. Let's see how they respond. Let's see how they go. You know, I mean, talent may be different, but um, <clears throat> you're either coaching it or allowing it to happen. And I think that uh, uh, that mirror of accountability is critical for everybody. Uh, and and uh, you know, I mean, if if uh, if we if we didn't, uh, you know, if, if we don't win a game, what could I have done to coach better? What could I have done to get the message better? What could I have done to make the guys uh, like go this way or that way or whatever? Um, <clears throat> the other thing I think academics is important. Um, that you know, if you can, uh, you know, we all get guys in various shapes and sizes. One thing I'm very proud of is. Uh, is of the top 25 teams, we had the highest graduation rate in the country. Of the uh, uh, public institutions, we have the highest graduation rate in the country. Well, and, and the reason that uh, the reason I'm proud of that, and the reason I think it's important. I mean, there's a lot of Mother Teresa reasons, you know. Gee, they got a degree, and all that's important. That is very important, and there's no question about that. But the um, the, uh, the the other thing that I think is important about that. If, 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 if you can get a guy to go to class, he'll do what you tell him to on the field, you know. I mean, you, everybody's got the guy, well, he's not a great student. If he's committed enough to go to class for you, he'll do what you tell him on the field. And I think it goes hand in hand. And I think it's really important from that standpoint as well. Uh, I think practice is the most important uh, aspect of what we do, the preparation. I think it's important to be as specific as possible. Uh, you know, don't practice things that you're not going to do in the game, uh, and uh, practice them as specifically as you can. If you want the guy's foot there, have a drill that puts the guy's foot there. If you want a guy to take care of the football, uh, have something that uh, teaches him to take care of the football, or at least emphasizes it. Emphasis is important, uh, as important as anything. And then um, uh, the other thing, I think it's important to make choices. There's too many good plays out there. Too many good ways to do things. Uh, you have to make choices. You have to decide which ones are going to be the best for you. Uh, have to decide, uh, uh, you know, which way you're going to, uh, you know, specifically how you're going to attack outside, how you're going to attack intermediate. Uh, uh, you know, what you're going to, your defensive front's going to be. You know, uh, make choices so then you can enhance the skills and develop your ability to do those things. Your technique will skyrocket if you. Uh, uh, do a good job being specific in uh, practice and making choices and, 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 and only doing uh, what you have the time to teach. Um, 
the other we talk about uh, swinging the sword, you know, and and you know we and this is uh, this uh, story got some notoriety, but um, I'll leave you with this. Uh, it got some notoriety. I think uh, approaching uh, your audience from various angles is is key because. The routine in, in football is vital. You can't be any good in football unless you have a routine, unless you do specific things. Like on a Tuesday at, at a certain time in the afternoon, every, every player that I've ever had knows exactly what we're doing at 345 on a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday practice 345. I mean, he, he knows what we're doing. And so the routine, I think, is critical because it allows you to specifically develop the skills uh, that you're going to do but uh, the other thing is, is I think to keep the energy, keep the enthusiasm up, keep the excitement, you have to come from different angles. Well, so I walk in with this pirate sword one day. Swords have a funny effect on people. Um, the, uh, so I got this sword sitting there, and I'm doing the talk. I'm not saying anything, but the sword's there. And then, um, uh, well, so then we, do, you know, we, we talk to them about their bodies of swords, you know. I mean, a, a, a pirate polishes his sword, sharpens his sword. Even the most derelict of pirates would take good care of their swords. And um, uh, and their bodies, their sword, and, and, and that's why they, they, they lift weights, to polish their swords, you know, and and, and the rest. And, and uh, you know, but how you swing your sword, I think that's key. I mean, are you going to swing it like this, like, oh, don't hit me? Or, or are you going to be out of control and, you know, wide open to all kinds of things, maybe cut yourself, or, or is it going to be precise and in a specific way? And, um, and uh, you know, so I'd go around, and I'm, that, luckily I didn't uh, decapitate anybody, but uh, so I swung the sword around as I talked and stuff like that. And and then I, I didn't think a lot of it, but I do hear from a lot of these guys that they, they, that they remembered that. And I think something just simple as far as coming in, at a different angle to keep it exciting is important. Well, then we set the sword on the table, and, and, and the, we had two different types of reactions. Some kids raced up there and wanted to hold the sword, and other kids uh, would detour around the table uh, in a wide, uh, a wide sort of fashion, you know, just because I, I guess they felt it was dangerous. But, uh, but in any case, uh, I think it made an impression, and. Uh, um, and I think uh, just little bitty subtle things to do that I think is critical. Uh, it's uh, really an honor for me to be here. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody that was polite enough to not walk out of here in the midst of this thing. And because uh, like I say, I mean, I can't, uh, there's no, no fooling you guys. And I've, uh, I've learned, studied, stolen, borrowed ideas from uh, more people out here than I can possibly remember or, or mention and uh and like i say i mean uh, uh truly an honor if there's ever anything that we can do uh, for you uh uh you know come vacation in west texas and we'll uh we'll talk a little football as uh as you as you're as you're heading through and uh and so i look uh, look forward to uh meeting you and the rest thank you Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at we are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. 
It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.